Uh, hey, thank you all for joining us this week. This is a real treat for me. When Jack Nicholas stopped playing golf, I kind of had to find someone else to pull for. And since there's only one Jack Nicholas, I kind of found myself cobbling together this small group of golfers to keep me interested. And one of those golfers is Kevin Kisner. And I had the pleasure of playing with him once. And to play golf with a professional golfer is to see just how different the game is for them from the rest of us. And I played with lots of really good amateurs and I played with some pros that, you know, stayed on tour for a second, but didn't make a living doing it. And then you play with Kisner and it's just, it's a different game. However, when you talk to Kevin Kisner, he's got a lot of interests that don't have anything to do with golf. So yeah, we see them on Saturdays and Sunday afternoons on the golf course But they do have lives off the course, Uh, and I'm going to start there. They have interests just like the rest of us that don't have anything to do with what they do for a living. And my guess is, just like I got tired of being asked at the grocery store about some terrible vote I cast in Congress, I'm sure Kisner gets tired of being asked you know, to fix someone's putting, although I'm going to ask him before this is over to fix my putting, but I'm not going to start there. Kevin, thank you for joining us. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Trey. I can't thank you enough for having me, buddy. I'm just uh, – I wish you were still casting some votes I could give you some grief about. <laughs> well, uh, and the thing I loved about you is you're very honest, and uh, the one vote I cast that was good, you were kind enough to tell me it was good, and then <laughs> the other 12,000 and something. Uh, but you, you actually follow politics. I mean, you follow up pretty carefully, don't you? Yeah, Absolutely. I like to know what's going on in the world. I like to see what's uh, what people think and how those how the way people think change over time is interesting to me. And um, we all evolve, and, and so does politics. And and how it it ebbs and flows in Washington just completely gratify. I mean, just the craziest thing in the world to me. Well, I'm gonna ask you about something else. Uh, that is uh, much more important uh, than my putting, although at times I struggle to think of anything that is more important to me than my putting. But you and your wife, Brittany, if I'm not mistaken, uh, just made – I had to read it twice because it's a staggering amount of money that y'all just gifted a children's hospital in Georgia. Did I read that correctly? You did. We just gave our – well, we gave them a fifty thousand dollar grant to start the program to see or to start seeing kids a couple years ago, and we saw such a huge need that uh, we wanted to start a program, and so we gave them a initial three hundred thousand dollar gift to start it, and then we are pledging another five million dollars to get the naming rights of the center, and we just gave our first million dollars last week. Did I hear you correctly? Five million dollars? That's yes, what sir. you and Brittany have, have have pledged to give? Yes, sir. Total of five point three five, actually. All right. I gotta ask you. I mean, I I know you grew up right across the line from Georgia. I know you went to UGA. I, is Brittany from Georgia? What 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 led to your interest in, in children's health? Well, that was what our foundation was started on. Uh, Brittany's a speech pathologist. She grew up in Madison, Georgia, which is about halfway between Augusta and Atlanta on I-20. Um, and so she, I moved her to Aiken, and she worked at the Children's Hospital in Augusta when we first started. And she would come home every day and tell me about the huge need and, and uh, lack of, of funding and not enough workers to, to keep up with demand and things that we're still seeing in 2022. Obviously, she hasn't worked in a few years as we started our own family, but I told her whenever she quit that when I got to a place or a platform that we could raise a bunch of money and, and make a difference, we would. And so she has been adamant about that. And, and uh, we have some great people on our board who have pushed us with our foundation and, and uh, you know, coming from uh, giving away about $500,000 in our first four years to sign up to give away $5.3 million was a little tough for me, but uh, we did it, and we got there, and uh, we're rocking and rolling. Well, I, I I hope the Lord rewards you with uh, lots and lots of wins or top ten finishes because that five point three million dollars. I mean, it it it's 
Look, well, I'm going to ask you how you grew up. I mean, I don't think you grew up rich. I think that's pretty much what, I mean, you, you got to earn that, right? You didn't inherit oh, yeah. that. No, we had to, I haven't inherited any money, but we, we, uh, we feel comfortable with, uh, giving back that amount with where we started and, and where we are now. And, and hopefully the future continues to stay bright. And, um, if it doesn't, we'll still be exhilarated with giving away that much money. All right. I want to ask you one more thing about that. Cause if I read this right, it's a program or part of what you're doing is dedicated to behavioral health and pediatric development. Number one, do I have that right? Number two, where did your interest, did that come from Brittany and speech pathology or is there some other interest there? Well, it's also got to do with mental wellness. And I have a huge issue with the instant access with children these days with social media and cell phones and how, you know, if I wanted to call you when I was a kid and you were a kid, I had to call your house and talk to your dad and your mom answered the phone and, and got you. But now our kids can write, fire off anything they want to communicate to each other behind closed walls. And I think it's going to be a dramatic change in the way children come about life. And, and I think the bullying and the harshness of it is going to be just hugely adversely affected on our children. And so that was kind of my arena. And then, and, and when Brittany wanted to get involved with the children's hospital, because she was so pleased with how, how great they've done, she reached out to them and said, we want to be your partners. We want to know where the biggest area demand in need in children are. And we want you to do a comprehensive study and send it back to us. And and they have some staggering data on this. And um, so this is what we felt comfortable with. And this is what we wanted to make a change in children's lives with uh, this center. And uh, I'll tell you this, I was just meeting with them before we presented the check. And they've already hired their, their doctor that's coming from MUSC in Charleston, actually, to come run the program. And they are eight months out in getting an appointment. Wow. Well, you know, I, my roommate in college is a clinical psychologist. I'm trying to get him to come on my Sunday night show because the data on what children are going through right now, you mentioned social media, the depression rates, the suicide rates. Look, I mean, I'm a lot older than you are, but but you're still a lot, you're, you're out of the teenage years. You're out of the twenties. I don't know what's going on, Kevin. I mean, it, 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 I mean, look, we picked on one another, but well, I didn't have like 10,000 people picking on me at one time. I, I don't yeah. I, I don't know either. If we had a problem, we we did it face to face. And that's where I think the biggest difference. Now, obviously, COVID didn't help either because they were all, you know, stacked in their houses, not not having any social interaction. And, and I'm sure sending the worst things ever to each other without any consequences. All right. I got to ask you, I know you went to UGA. You grew up in Aiken, right? Yes, sir. Please tell me that the University of South Carolina and Clemson recruited you to play golf. Please tell me that. They did. Okay. So why did you pick UGA? Well, you know, all my friends in Aiken, they were South Carolina and Clemson fans, you know, tough divide because their parents were affiliated with either one of the schools. And my parents went to NC State and Duke for both growing up in Charlotte. And so I didn't have any real ties to either school. And, and really, to be honest, neither school ever really, when I went there, blew me away with their facilities or where they were. And I, I pulled into Athens, Georgia on my recruiting visit, and I was completely blown away with the campus and the, the golf facilities and the golf coaches and the other players that were coming to be involved with that program. So it was a it was an easy uh, answer for me whenever I took my visits. All right. I know you're modest. You're about the only friend I can say that about, uh, but you are modest. There had to come a point, Kevin, when you realized, hey, I'm better than everyone else. I, I, I am good enough to make a living playing golf. I mean, it's one thing to be a good junior. It's right. another thing to be a good college player. But you're like, I mean, the last time I checked, your top 25 FedEx President's Cup and Ryder Cup standings. So when did you realize, you know what, I am pretty good at this? Yeah, Trey, I'd say my career has kind of been a steady climb up the mountain. Um, you know, I got better in high school, got better in college. When I got out of college, I didn't have any money. And so to, to go start playing professional golf, you got to put money up to play for money. And I'm frugal enough that that really hacked me off. You know, I'm not going to go give a thousand dollars away and kind of uh, just give it up over poor golf. So I'm going to figure out how to play really well to make more money. And I think that 
uh, mindset and just continue to help my mountain climb. And each week I played better and I got more, uh, more exposure. I got more experience on, on the levels and, you know, eventually making it on the PGA tour where I struggled my first couple of years, uh, just trying to find your footing and trying to get more comfortable. But as I got more comfortable on each stage, I started to excel more and more. And I think that's what's the most gratifying part of my career. For the full podcast, go to foxnewspodcast.com.